Hey everyone, thanks for dropping in. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of color grading in CapCut PC. In this first part, I'll be concentrating specifically on the basics and HSL adjustments. We're going to match the color in this video to the movie, The Fall of the House of Ushers. First and foremost, before diving into any color correction, make sure to set up your working space. Click on the hamburger button right here and select Color Oscilloscope. Now, let me walk you through how these tools work. The chart in the middle is called the waveform. It indicates the lighting in your footage based on the screen's position. For example, in this frame, the runners appear very dark as they move across the screen, and the two white portions on the left and right represent the sky. This shot is quite dark as all the information is below the middle line. When the sun comes out, you'll notice the illuminated part revealed on the waveform in the same position as the sun. Now, onto the left chart, known as the RGB waveform. To illustrate how this chart works, let's introduce some color. Notice that when I add a blue tint to this shot, the three channels, red, green, and blue, are no longer even. The blue channel is now dominant. The RGB waveform is essentially a waveform, but with the three channels separated. Moving on to the chart on the right-hand side, known as the vector scope, it showcases all the colors present in the shot and their saturation levels. For instance, in this shot with a yellow tint, you can observe a light pointing specifically to the yellow marker here. If I shift the yellow tint towards red, the vector scope information changes accordingly, now aligning with the red marker. Increasing saturation in the shot expands the information on the vector scope, indicating that the footage is now more saturated. Now that you're familiar with the tool, let's dive into some color grading. After comparing two footage clips, I notice that my footage doesn't match the contrast of the reference, especially in the dark areas. When observing the dark portions on the waveform, it's clear that the darkest part of my footage is nowhere close to the reference, which extends all the way down here at the bottom. As a first step, I'll increase the contrast. Moving on, I examine the widest part of the reference frame, revealing that the green channel is dominant, indicating a green tint in the shot. So, I'll return to my footage and use the temperature and hue sliders to add green and yellow. Here's the before and after. Moving on to the next footage. Once again, the darkest part in their shot is quite deep. You can see on both sides of the gate, indicating the shadow, they extend very deep down here. Back to my footage, I know I need to match the contrast to resemble theirs. I'll increase the contrast while toning down the brightness. Their whites have a yellow and green tint, so I'll go back and replicate that. Pay attention to the color of the reference frame shown in the vector scope. All colors are very muted, not saturated. In contrast, my shot has a highly saturated green and yellow, so I'll dial down the saturation slider here. I won't go too far because it would cause all other colors to lose saturation. In this case, I'll use the HSL tab, targeting the green and reducing saturation. Additionally, I notice that the color of the trees in the reference doesn't match mine in terms of color, so I'll go back to the hue slider to shift my yellow to match theirs. Now, let's take a look at their shot. And then my shot. This is before. And this is after. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And I'll catch you guys in the next videos.